thank you so much, Sarah, for that kind introduction. And good afternoon, everyone. What a pleasure it is to welcome you to our beautiful historic campus here at Trinidad State College. I couldn't imagine a more beautiful fall day for you to see our campus. And I hope you enjoyed your dining experience in the cafeteria with the students. So you get a little bit of a flavor for what our students um, get to enjoy every day. Um, but what I would like to do for the next 10 minutes or so is to take you on a journey, a brief journey. And this journey begins with a small college, almost 100 years old, in a small town that has seen its share of ups and downs and struggles throughout the years. We've been through the ravages of boom and bust economic cycles that are tied to coal mining, natural gas, farming and ranching, and through it all, we have endured. This community has endured in part because it has this little economic engine sitting on a hill called Trinidad State College. And our college, and I actually think I can speak for the other community college presidents, rural community college presidents who are in the room today, when I say that the community college represents all that is hopeful and creative and resilient in rural Colorado. We're helping to build the economic prosperity of our region. We offer an on-ramp to the middle class for our citizens. We train the workforce of our communities and we are inextricably linked to the economic success of our region. And what I want you to know about Trinidad State College is that like everyone else, we've been hit hard by COVID, but we're surviving. And actually, I would say we're more than surviving. We are thriving um, in many ways. And we're making a big impact in Trinidad and in Alamosa and, and throughout Southern Colorado. So what I'm going to do um, over the next few minutes is share with you some of the ways that we are helping to drive economic development in our communities. And basically, I'm gonna be talking about the four posters that you saw out in the hallway. Um, on your way in. So feel free to look at those again um, when you exit. But the first program I'm gonna talk about is um, our construction trades. So we have brought back our building trades program through an initiative called Copper. And um, you heard the AG just speak about that a few minutes ago. It's called the Colorado Partnership for Education and Rural Revitalization. And we've been so fortunate to partner with A.G. Weiser and his staff, um, as well as our colleagues at Otero College and Lamar Community College. And this is really just an incredible program because it solves several problems with one program. It trains greatly needed construction workers um, who are badly needed by contractors in our community. It helps eradicate blighted housing, which we have a lot of here in Trinidad and Los Animas County, and it provides affordable housing for local residents. So this is a program that's just a win-win all around. And I hope you had a chance today, a little bit earlier, to go by the houses that we're renovating over on Stonewall Avenue um, to see the work that our students have been doing. If you didn't, there's a few photos that are shown here on this slide. But basically, it's an intensive four-week program where students learn basic carpentry skills, um, both in the classroom and on the job site. Um, they actually receive a stipend for their work on the job site. And if they pass successfully, they receive an industry certification. And if they have perfect attendance and they show up on time to class, they get to keep their tool belt um, and a set of tools that's worth about $350. So far, we've trained 30 students in this program since March, and many of them are already working for local contractors in the community. We have to, yeah, thank you. 
This is something that the community has been asking for, and thanks to the help from the AG's office, we've been able to put it together and deliver it. The second program I want to mention is right here in this very room. So in support of all that is happening in our community with the growing arts and creative industries, we're renewing our own focus on the arts with a new program in technical theater. And this complements our existing fine arts program um, in theater and uh, performing arts. So believe it or not, there are actually jobs in the arts that are high tech and high demand in our area. There's are jobs like audio and media technicians, production designers, set designers, lighting technicians, and so on. And these jobs also cross the border into New Mexico where there are tech-related jobs in the film industry. If you're sticking around for the Calexico experience this weekend, you'll get a flavor for some of these opportunities. But the work that's going on this theater isn't really obvious right now, mostly because um, it's behind the walls, and um, it has all to do with upgrading the technology. But we we're very fortunate to receive a grant from the Colorado Department of Local Affairs, um, which was matched by our foundation for a total of $400,000. And that's going to go a long way to bring this theater into the present as well as into the future. We're just getting started. Most of uh, what's happened so far is the design work, and those are kind of the drawings you see on the slide. But come back in a year, and you can see a show in our new high-tech theater. The third project I want to um, highlight is our library renovation, and we are absolutely thrilled that this renovation was funded by the General Assembly this year at $6.2 million. What's exciting about this is that this is the first construction project, major construction project, that has been funded on the Trinidad campus since 1996. That's 25 years ago. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not actually certain that I would consider the 1996 project a major construction project because it was simply the enclosure of the stairs um, in front of the gym. Our newest building on this campus is the building you're in, the Masari Theater, and it was built in 1979. So, gosh, we're really proud of the fact that we're the oldest community college in Colorado, and um, I mention that all the time. We're almost 100 years old, but that means our buildings are getting very old. So the renovation of this library means the world to us, and it will truly transform this campus. Also of interest, um, you'll notice the photo in the bottom right-hand corner is an example of a maker space. Well, part of this library renovation includes a business incubator, and we're proud to be partnering with the Catalyst Campus in Colorado Springs to help design an incubator that can bring companies and jobs to our area right here in rural southern Colorado communities. Um, Trinidad State is one of the coalition members um, in partnership with the Catalyst Campus for an EDA Build Back Better grant proposal to expand the aerospace industry into underserved communities throughout Colorado. And I think you may be hearing a little more about that um, from Kevin O'Neill, who will be speaking later. And then the fourth project I want to mention is our residence hall renovation. I'm really excited that we were able to use some of our federal stimulus money, $2.1 million, to begin putting air conditioning in two of our oldest dormitories. We have four dormitories here on campus. They're all old, but our two oldest are over 60 years old, with some of their mechanical systems being 40 years past their serviceable life. Unfortunately, dorms are not always the shiniest projects to talk about because they aren't directly tied to jobs or workforce development, but I'm here to tell you that our college could not survive 
without them. Yes, we teach a lot of classes online, and certainly we've expanded our use of remote learning throughout the pandemic, but a lot of our programs, actually most of our programs, are hands-on and require hands-on in-person learning, and our resident students are the anchor of enrollment for this campus. And our resident students also generate a lot of ac economic activity in our community. And I, I want to be clear with everyone that we're not going for luxury dorms here. There's still going to be brick and cinder block buildings with community bathrooms. We're not trying to put in a buffalo-shaped swimming pool or anything like that. We just want our dorms to be safe and habitable and up to modern building code. As you know, or you may not know this, dorms are not eligible for state funding because they're considered an auxiliary enterprise. And so we have a challenge ahead of us. We got the air conditioning and two of the halls paid for, but that's it. We still have a 17.5 million dollar challenge ahead of us. I wanna share with you a quick comparison of the wealth disparity between some larger, wealthier institutions of higher education in Colorado and smaller rural colleges. So what you see here are some recently announced or completed residence hall projects. Colorado Mountain College um, has recently announced that they're building four new residence halls with 50 beds each at a cost of $40 billion, million. CU Boulder this year announced they're building two new residence halls with a total of 750 beds at a cost of $173.6 million. CU Denver just completed a new residence hall on the Auraria campus, 550 beds at a cost of $78.5 million. Trinidad State is proposing not to build new residence halls, but to renovate four existing halls, 326 beds, at a cost of 17.5 million. So it's quite a bargain by comparison, don't you think? And I wanna be clear that um, I'm, I'm showing this slide I do, not to begrudge my colleagues, um, who come from wealthier institutions. I don't begrudge them. Maybe a little bit, I do. <laughs> um, but the truth is we pride ourselves on being cost effective and on being an affordable institution. So I would be thrilled and happy about this entire chart if there was any way for the last line on the chart to become a reality. But the reality is we have no way to raise the $17 million needed to do this renovation. Since, we're not, since dorms are not eligible for state funding, the only option we have is debt financing um, or philanthropy, which $17 million is not really realistic in our community. Um, so to, to service the debt on $17.5 million, we would have to raise the fees we charge students for the dorms by over 100%. And then, of course, we wouldn't be able to compete with our friends at Otero and Lamar and um, other community colleges. And so the dorms just continue to decay year after year after year. And it becomes harder and harder to attract students because they don't want to live in dilapidated dorms. And it just becomes a vicious cycle. Um, but let's not despair because I have some ideas. And I've been talking to lots of people about ideas. I'm not going to go into details, but if any of you have ideas for me, please come and talk to me later. So that's the four posters that are out in the hall. Those are some of the big priorities that we're working on. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention a few other of our outstanding programs, such as nursing, where we graduate about 40 new nurses into the field each year, 90% of whom stay in our local communities. 
We'll be graduating our first class of BSN students, that's Bachelor of Science in Nursing, this December. And I think it's fitting that our first students to receive a bachelor's degree from Trinidad State will also be the first students to have our new name on their diplomas. Um, we have our nursing dean in the audience here today, Lori Ray Hamilton, raise your hand. She's a rock star. So thank you for being here. Um, we also have an outstanding partnership with CU Denver for teacher preparation. Um, we have 45 students in this program. These are students who are pursuing their BA degree um, in teacher education, both on the Trinidad campus and on the Alamosa campus. That's 45 students who are in the pipeline to become rural teachers in helping to solve the rural teacher preparation crisis in rural Colorado. Um, we also have uh, a line tech program that produces electrical line technicians. We graduate 35 students each semester from this program um, out of Colorado Springs. We, uh, we have 100% job placement in this program. We have a new program in computer information systems and cybersecurity coming out of the Alamosa campus that we're very proud of. Um, and then we're also very proud of our work with Second Chance Pell. We're the only college in Colorado that is authorized to offer Second Chance Pell. And we're ser serving currently 74 students um, in 14 different correctional facilities around the state this semester. This is my last slide, and I have to brag just a little bit on our outcomes. Trinidad State College is leading the state on almost all indicators of success, including retention, completion, graduation, and you can see that our graduation rate is 58% compared to the community college system average of 32.6%. And what I'm especially proud of is that uh, we're also doing well in closing the equity gap meaning we're also doing well on these same indicators for students of color. That's very important to us because we are a Hispanic serving institution, that's a federal designation, and we actually have the highest percentage of Hispanic students of all community colleges in Colorado at 41%. So because of our strong outcomes, we were recognized by the Aspen Institute as a top 150 community college in the nation that's out of 1,100 community colleges. Thank you. And we even advanced into the top 40 colleges this year who were selected for interviews for the Aspen Prize. And I wanna tell you that our new name is helping us on so many fronts. And I want to thank everyone here who helped support this change. Um, from our sponsoring legislators, Senator Simpson, Representative Holtorf, Representative Valdez, to other legislators who supported us in committee and on the floor, um, and especially community members, both in Trinidad and Alamosa, who helped support this change. I'll just conclude here by saying that I'm really proud that we are helping to transform our communities in Trinidad and Alamosa and our entire eight county service area. We are doing so by completely reimagining the way we, re we structure ourselves in order to build workplace skills that lead to family sustaining wages. This means moving away from centuries old academic models and partnering. We're really focusing on partnerships partnering with businesses, partnering with government, partnering with each other, with our fellow community colleges and universities to reimagine where learning happens, how it happens, and who it happens with. We need to remember, and I think as policy leaders, it's especially important to remember that community colleges are not universities. We have to handle multiple missions. We're educating 
all levels from adult literacy all the way through applied bachelor's degrees. And we're trying to bring everyone into the workforce. We're a very different kind of educational institution and we're delivering on all of these critical missions. And we do this on a shoestring budget, especially rural colleges. But we endure and we persist because we're passionate about our mission. We're helping to build a more equitable, prosperous community, and we make Colorado a more equitable and prosperous state. That is my goal at Trinidad State College. I wanna thank you for listening, and thank you for being in Trinidad. I'd now like to ask some of my colleagues to join me on the stage for a special presentation. Dr. Landon Mascareñas is one of our state board members for the State Board of Community Colleges. Dr. Linda Lujan, president of Lamar Community College. And Dr. Tim Alvarez, president of Otero College. Good afternoon. Well, it's, first off, it's wonderful to be here today. Thank you, uh, Mayor Rico, for inviting us uh, into the community. And uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, actually sharing the stories uh, that we've heard from Attorney General Weiser and uh, the story from uh, Denver Broncos. I mean, that's just like the, about teamwork. What a really important perspective. And, and thank you, Sarah, for all of your work to do uh, to put this together. Uh, again, my name is Landon Mascareñas, and I um, have spent a, a, uh, now the last couple years of my life uh, working uh, not only in K-12 uh, for my career, but in the last couple years in the community college system. And so uh, I'm very, very excited uh, on behalf of the Colorado Community College System to announce a really special award uh, to Senator Simpson. So if we could have uh, Senator Simpson uh, come on up, um, you know, and just give him a round of applause. Come on up, Senator. Senator Simpson, um, on behalf of the Colorado Community College System, in recognition uh, for your leadership on HB 21008 regarding allowing two of our colleges, Trinidad State Junior College and Otero Junior College, to drop the word junior from their official titles, making the new names Trinidad State College and Otero College, uh, the Colorado Community College uh, System has uh, selected you as a recipient of our Legislator Star Award. Changing the name of these critically important educational institutions addresses a long-standing effort to increase the perception of value among students and potential employers and to help foster enrollment growth, build partnerships, as we heard from Dr. Epper, and convey a sense of pride among the students. Furthermore, you ensured the college's voices from the regions were heard throughout the entire legislative process and continue to demonstrate unwavering support of students and confidence in our colleges as we remove the barriers to higher education and workforce training for all Coloradans. This award is given annually to legislators who make an extra effort to understand and champion our issues. Your leadership and support during the 2021 session merits this distinction. So again, thank you, Senator Simpson, for your steadfast support for our mission to provide affordable, accessible, high-quality post-secondary education and workforce training opportunities to thousands of students across Colorado. Thank you, Senator Simpson. words. Thank you all very much. And, and really, um, Dr. Epper approached me, I think, within two weeks after the election about considering sponsoring this bill. And uh, honestly, I said, as, as long as it has support of the community, the faculty, the students, I, I'm all in. And uh, Trinidad and uh, Otero certainly demonstrated that um, 
one other junior college. It didn't, I, I really thought this was gonna be a really simple, easy first bill for me. It didn't quite turn out that way, but a lot of lessons learned about don't expect any bill as being very easy and simple. But Representative Holtorf is here. I can't tell you how much effort he put into it in the House as well, and Representative Valdez as well. So it was an honor to be, really carry this as what really was the first bill I introduced, and it'll be very memorable how valuable these institutions are to rural Colorado is really important to me. So thank you all very much. Thank you.